Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever wanted more clarity, guidance, and direction, whether in day-to-day decisions or for the big picture in your life, then do we have the intuitive show for you. Today I'll be talking with Robert Rees, intuitive, naturopath, and the best-selling co-author of numerous books with Doreen Virtue, including Flower Therapy, Angel Detox, and Nutrition for Intuition. And that's what I want to talk with Robert about today, about how we can use food as an elixir to improve our intuition, our sense of peace, and of course, for greater health. That plus we'll talk about an angel detox, flower therapy, what all kids should study at 14, (laughs) how to party at 18, and what in the world's a fast food hangover. So welcome to the show, Robert. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. (laughs) Woohoo! <laughs> so before we dive right into things, did you really ask Shakespeare for the answer on your tests? <laughs> uh, you've been doing your research, Michael. You're telling everybody my secrets. <laughs> I did. You know, in um, high school, I suppose I started to realize that uh, what I thought was normal was maybe not normal for all of my friends. <laughs> and so, you know, in one of my English essays, there's, you know, that annoying question, you know, which is, what did Shakespeare mean by this? And it's like, who knows what Shakespeare meant by this? You know, you read the plays, you know, a hundred times and still it's in a completely different language. Um, so I thought, I'll just ask the man himself. So I'm sitting in this exam room with, you know, hundreds of other people and I'm, you know, talking to Shakespeare going, hey, what did you mean by this? <laughs> how'd you, how'd you do on the test? Yeah, I did pretty good on the test. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I suppose, you know, that's, that's kind of, even though it's funny, um, that's kind of the approach I've taken with most of my work. You know, it's like when... I get confused and I get stuck in my head and I'm thinking, oh, should I go in this direction or should I focus more energy into this or, you know, is this a good system to use? You know, I get stuck up in my logical brain Mm -hmm. (laughs) and it all turns into this jumbled up mess. So then I stop myself and I ask the guys upstairs. And I say, well, what do you think I should do? You know, what, what direction is not only going to serve me, but is going to serve everyone else that I can reach? Um, and sometimes those answers, you know, it makes logical sense to me as well. And sometimes those answers, I think, oh, this is a bit far-fetched. <laughs> you know, but I trust it anyway, because I've learned that that's just what I have to do. Mm-hmm. And it works out. So you've, you've had this ability since you were young, from what I understand. You, you've always been able to tap into this. Have you always had clarity as far as knowing what's you and what's your intuition or extra you? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Clear yeah. as mud. <laughs> yeah. No, there was... There was no real clarity to begin with because I didn't know that that was something extra. Mm-hmm. You know, I just, I thought everyone was going through the same experiences I was going through. You know? And as a kid, I would, you know, be around, you know, the family members and friends where, you know, we had, we had all these big family parties. You know? So everybody would come, you know, these relatives that you see like twice a year, you know, they were at the house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, You know, you wouldn't know anything about them, but I would feel certain things when I was around them. And, you know, I might just kind of say things in passing and it would take them by surprise. They're like, you know, how do you know this kind of thing? I'm like, I don't know. know, I'm just this kid kind of like, I don't know, you know, whatever. And off I go and I walk off in a different direction. Um, But then as I started to kind of piece it together and go, well... You know, what is this? You know, where are these feelings coming from? And, you know, what is this sense telling me? Uh, I started, you know, reading more spiritual books. Um, I started going to spiritual workshops, you know, and for most of those in the beginning, I had to get, you know, special permission um, because... Don't I want kids learning eight. about spirituality. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like, you know, I'm under 18 and I was even under 16. Um, so, you know, I'm this minor, you know, going to these random workshops about you know, these deep spiritual topics <laughs> and... 
um, you know, I started to understand that what these feelings and these thoughts were, um, it was more like my intuition and my guidance that was coming through. Mm -hmm. And just because I was lucky, you know, to sort of grow up in a supportive family that that never got pushed down, you know, it's like, I always had this, you know, amazing imagination and as a kid, every day after school, you know, I would go out to my cubby house. It's like a, a tree house that wasn't in a tree, you know, and so I would go out into my cubby house and, you know, I would just make up these, you know, fantastic stories. <laughs> so I'm out there, you know, playing around and I had like glitter and, you know, all sorts of other things out there making these magic potions and doing who knows what out there. Um, but it's just, you know, I kind of let my energy and my attention go to these little fantastic worlds. Um, and I suppose that never got shut down. Fantastic. And yeah. And as I got older, you know, I kind of kept part of that. And I really feel that's what helped me to trust those messages that I was getting more clearly. It, it, it seems, and, and we, we all tend to dwell on that which which is is most on our minds. I think that term is we search. <laughs> we want to, or me search. We want to research what's of, of most interest to to ourselves. One of the things that's been on our minds lately, and and I'm thinking of of this childhood that you're having, is protecting our energy. I don't even know if protecting is the right word, but if you're sensitive to energies, I'm picturing you at these gatherings with family members coming over to squeeze your cheeks. You're going, who in that? How are you? <laughs> <laughs> and yep. and how do you So so this morning I was telling you we've we've we had Kindle kind of blow up on us before this talk. And 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 all books locking down from all directions and it's been minor chaos and it's it was hard for me going through this going okay, I know this is guidance. I know this is happening for a reason. My wife, she's the producer and her stomach went in knots because of me clearly i'm the guilty party what does she do what do you do to go force fields up when you're when you if you can realize this isn't mine i don't own this mm -hmm. yeah. and that's the thing we have to we have to become more in tune with ourself in that aspect mm -hmm. to know what is my stuff you know, like, is this my feeling or is this, you know, feelings from my partner or that relative or that random friend or, you know, what is it? Because the way I kind of see it is everyone that we're connected to, they leave like these energetic fingerprints on our aura. And, you know, we can handle that, you know, for a little bit. <laughs> but if we get covered in those fingerprints, then that's where the issues start to pick up. So, so, yeah, talk, so talk with the, me more, more. Yes, yeah. I, I'm yeah. thinking <laughs> there are days where I get nervous before a show, mm -hmm. and and I I'm like I don't know what's going on. I don't know. And then after the show, I find out oh, it's my guest. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, that's the thing. And it, you know, I I learned to do that when I started giving readings as well. You know, like sometimes you'd just be you know so chilled out, and the reading would be beautiful, and mm -hmm. there'd be those moments where you'd be freaking yourself out before they walked in the door. <laughs> and I started to realize this isn't my stuff. <laughs> this is my clients, and so I got confident enough to voice it. You know, so I would say to them, uh, "You're feeling a little bit nervous today." You know, what me? Like, me? Huh? What? Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's nothing to be scared of. Um, but I think what we need to do is start to realize what is my stuff. You know, what is my energy? And the thing that I find is that so many of us are so busy every single day that we don't have this time to just really stop and reflect and go. How am I doing? Mm -hmm. You know, we, we kind of judge our success on how many boxes we tick off during that day. <laughs> but I feel like our success is really, you know, how much did I, did I love today? Mm -hmm. You know, how much happiness did I bring? And how much peace did I share? You know, and that's what's kind of filling up the bank account for our soul, you know, it's not this other stuff where, you know, we're going through the motions and we're doing the nine to five thing and all of that, because that's just, you know, what we're preoccupying our time with. But we need to go, okay, how am I doing? You know, it, and if it, we become is, more comfortable. 
you're yes. making me think now having having a uh, a second checklist although that we can simply we can go into to do mode on that too but a second checklist that balances the to do's is the mm-hmm. to soothes <laughs> yeah <laughs> every yeah, time exactly. we do it to do we get to do it to soothe <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, I'm, I've got, you know, hidden behind my screen here, you know, this wall of post-it notes. <laughs> and so it's like, I write all my little jobs down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's more over here. All right. Yeah. Well, well. <laughs> you know, it's bad though when the colors start to change, you know, so it's like I haven't had purple post-it notes for six months and there's still some sitting here. <laughs> the, the challenge that I have with the post-it notes is I, unless they are literally covering, covering my screen, I can see right through them. <laughs> <laughs> you need a better system <laughs> because, you know, what I, what I do though is, as you said, like have two lists. So I've got the list of the stuff, you know, that I've got to do, but I also write down things on there like go outside, mm-hmm. you know, laugh, you know, have fun, you know, so that as I'm going through, you know, the stuff that I have to do, I also come across the ones where it's like, let's just do something funny, you know, it's like, let's just laugh about something, you know, read some corny joke or watch some silly YouTube video just that is going to bring out that laughter, you know, because otherwise we get stuck into work mode, you know, and I suppose going back to your original question is, you know, figuring out what is mine, Mm -hmm. you know, and if we kind of have that little checklist throughout the day, we know if it's our stuff, you know, it's like, I've got nothing to be nervous about. Why am I feeling so anxious? It's like, okay, this mustn't be mine. You know, who's around me that might also be feeling that way? You know, and then what I do is I use that as an opportunity to help them, you know, to either teach them a way to cope with it or to share with them a different way of, you know, thinking about it or to clear their energy or, you know, you're, other ways. To, uh, if you're, if you're around people who are, there <laughs> we're Monday morning. Let's say it's Monday morning. You're just outside New York City, um, <laughs> which we happen to be. It's not Monday today, but if it were, and and all of a sudden you find yourself going, I, 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 I. <laughs> and you realize you're getting caught up in other people's energies. Can you simply mm-hmm. work? Will it will it suffice if you start sending out love to them and sending calming energy? Because obviously you can't you know stop every car that's screaming by on the road. <laughs> Go you! I want you to tell me how you're doing today, but but if we just start cranking up that love towards them, we will start to feel better? Mm -hmm. Like I feel that the peace out here Mm -hmm. starts from the peace in here. And it is about us kind of feeling different to start radiating that energy around us. But I've only been to New York once Mm -hmm. and you know, the taxi rides, it's like you're on a roller coaster. (laughs) You know, it's like it might be, you know, this half a meter or like, you know, three feet away and they floor it. (laughs) 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 Gotta go as fast as they can. Um, And I remember I was walking down like one of those really busy streets on the way to, um, is it Central Park, I think? Yeah, Because I wanted to feed the squirrels because, you know, I'm obsessed with squirrels. (laughs) Squirrels! Exactly. So we had to go there so I could feed the squirrels. Um, But we're walking down this, you know, really busy street and there's millions of people everywhere and they're all in their suits and they're all in a hurry and they're all looking cranky. (laughs) And I'm And you're glowing bright. (laughs) <laughs> I know I'm fascinated by this. I'm going, look at all of these people. I'm like, you know, they're in, you know, one of the most famous places in the entire planet. And, you know, they're not excited by this. You know, it's like they could be thinking of this in a completely different way. Um, you know, another funny story, uh, uh, because of what I do, and, you know, I'm really blessed to do what I do. Um, but I'm and, lucky And that to- is, we, we should talk about that, which is a balance of naturopath, intuition, readings, all of this in kind of a... <laughs> Yeah, blended potpourri. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm lucky enough to travel. Um, so I have to go to, you know, airports and things, you know, a fair bit. And I am the person who always gets stopped for extra screening. <laughs> <laughs> Randomly, in quotes, selected every time. And at, at first, I was getting offended by this, Michael. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking they needed some why TLC. Do so, why do I look so suspicious? <laughs> you know, it's like I've got nothing to hide. Um, but then what the angels told me is, 
you know, the, the customs officers and the TSA people and all of that, they're trained to notice the differences, mm -hmm. right? And so the people that are going through the airport, you know, they're all, you know, again, looking cranky, you know, drinking their coffees, you know, and off they go. Um, and then I come in, <laughs> you know, sprinkling flowers everywhere. <laughs> and they're kind of like, something's up with this guy. <laughs> so, so let me tell you a way that you can circumvent that energetically. <laughs> yeah, please. You pull yourself aside and say, I opt for the pat down. <laughs> and, and that way you don't have to think you're singled out. <laughs> you're just taking care of yourself by not going through the x-ray or whatever fancy energetic thing <laughs> the, the problem is though because it happens so often it's i've taken that as part of the travel experience so i <laughs> i'll stop and wait for the extra screen and then they're like kind of looking at you like what are you doing i just i won like the lottery it. today <laughs> you know but i think too like as we were talking about uh like shielding and protection mm -hmm. that you know, people kind of come in two different aspects with that, you know, and there's some people where they say if we, you know, focus on shielding and protection, then in a way we're kind of affirming attack. Mm -hmm. you know? And so we're in a way attracting more of this attack energy because we're putting a shield in place. But at the same time, I believe that we need that protection. Uh, it's just like, you know, locking the door of your home, you know, or locking the car as you leave for work or something, you know, that we want to put that protection in place, you know, because not everybody out there is love and light right now. You know? And we want to help inspire them to see a different way of thinking, but you know, at this space in our planet's time, you know, not everyone is up here floating on a cloud with us. You know, so Darn it. we need to make sure we're protected. <laughs> you know, it's just, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for me, like I often just, you know, visualize myself inside this bubble of light. Right? And depending on the day, you know, that color might change. You know? So it might be white light and then tomorrow it might be purple light and, you know, each color kind of represents different things, but I think if we go with our, our gut feelings and we listen to that intuition, then that's going to tell us the right color to use. You know? So then we're able to still be of service, we can be open-hearted, we can be loving, but we're also keeping our energy intact at the same time. I like that. I'm always thinking of my shirt color selection before yes. an interview. Am I going yep. with blue for soothing today? And what color blue am I going with? Or today I cracked out. I haven't pulled this one out in a month or two. Some pink for today. <laughs> <laughs> it's feeling a little bit more floral. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> I appreciate that gesture. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. So let's let's go from there and and I know you do reading. So if you're up for it, let's do a short reading and let's really then let's dive into some nutrition for intuition. And I was telling you about our our green smoothie fix. We need every day here, so we'll dive into it. Yeah, I'm obsessed with green smoothies, so watch out, Michael. You're <laughs> opening up, you know, a whole a whole topic there. Uh, but what I want to use as well is um, I want to use the Flower Therapy Oracle cards. Sounds All perfect. Right? So let me pick a card for you and your lovely wife. And then I think if we have time, I want to pick another card for everybody watching. Beautiful. Let's see. This one. All right. Ah, speaking of anxiety, Michael. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> let, let go of anxiety. <laughs> I, I would agree with that. You know? uh, and so this is our lavender flower, okay? Mm. And so this one tells us that, you know, right now is the perfect space for you guys to just, you know, relax and become more peaceful because when we have that, you know, constant mind chatter, mm -hmm. it's hard for us to distinguish the voice of love and the voice of fear. And we all have both of those voices. You know? So at any given time, we've got the voice of love, which mm -hmm. is encouraging and supporting. And then we've got that voice of fear, which is you know, saying, you can't do it. Don't even try. You're not qualified enough and just give up now. You know? But what happens when you know, this anxiety kicks in is 
those two voices blend together and it's hard for us to tell which one is the one we should listen to. (laughs) You know, so is this my angels telling me not to do it because it's a bad idea or is this just my fear telling me not to do it? Yeah. And that's, right. and that's so, a big that's a big question. How do we discern that? Because I've heard that that angels won't speak to you in a in a berating fashion. That's that's your ego telling you, "Hey, stupid, yes. don't do that." Okay, that's not an angel. I got that exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're hearing, "Don't walk to the edge of the cliff," and you're going, "Is that just me not being courageous?" And I need to, you know. <laughs> Grow a set, or is that an angel saying, We want to keep you alive so you don't need those wings for a little while? Yeah. <laughs> well, stay away from the cliff. But at the same time, the way that I've learned to do it is to again take that minute to tune into the energy of that, that little message. Mm-hmm. And what I do is I ask myself the question, you know, is this message you know, making me feel like more confident? You know, does it get me excited? And sometimes it might be like this little anxiety fear thing, but it's more of like an anticipation anxiety. You know, something that you feel is going to be awesome and amazing, but it kind of scares you at the same time. (laughs) It's like every show. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I hear you. (laughs) You know, but I think we have to kind of know that that at the same time, the essence of that is a positive thing. Mm -hmm. It's saying even though this might be scary and might be pushing you out of your comfort zone, this has the potential to help a lot of people. So do it. It pushes you to do it. Whereas that voice of fear is the one that's going to say, you know what? You know, the Kindle thing didn't work, you know, so maybe you should just cancel this and just reschedule the show for a different time. And, you know, we'll do it. A, we'll do it another day. You know, maybe it'll be better then. And, you know, it's like it, it tells you not to do it. You know, As right? you're and, saying that, I'm feeling a constricting energy that doesn't feel right to me. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, and that's what we need to do. We need to pay attention. You know, how does this message make me feel? You know, is it making me feel, you know, more connected? Is it making me feel more in tune, more confident? Or is it separating me? Because the whole purpose of that ego voice, you know, that voice of fear, is to pull you away from the herd. Right? It's to make you think that you're the only person who doesn't have spiritual abilities. You know, you're the the worst person on the planet. You know, you'll never find love. You know, all of this. It it pulls you away from everybody else and isolates you. Right? Whereas our angels are going to encourage us and support us because. They know we're here to do big things. You know, they remember what we signed up for this lifetime. And so they're going to help push us in that direction. And there's, uh, we don't have to go too far down this rabbit hole or we, we'll be way off topic here. But nobody <laughs> came here to do small things, did we? Mm-hmm. No. What a waste of time that would be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, but I do at the same time make this nice little joke that I don't think it's any coincidence we're born crying. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, no. It's like, <laughs> It's like we come back and we're like, what? (laughs) I forgot about this, how, you know, people don't listen, (laughs) you know, and all the pain and suffering that happens for no reason. So, yeah, I think the message for you and Jessica, Michael, is that it's time to just trust, let go of the anxiety, you know, allow things to happen the way they're meant to happen, you know, because everything is divinely perfect. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) And now for everybody watching... Ah, the eucalyptus, an Australian flower, Mm -hmm. uh, which says, open your arms to receiving. So this tells us that, you know, we like to be the helper. You know, we like to give. You know, we like to do things for other people. But now it's our turn to let them do something for us. So when that friend or family member says, can I help you with that? We are going to say yes. I like (laughs) it. We're not going to go, no, 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 I can do it. Yes, you probably can do it, but let's let them help us, you know, because at the same time, we like how it feels when we help other people. Mm -hmm. So why would we want to deny that from someone else? Beautiful, beautiful. Well, thank you for the reading. So let's let's go from there into Nutrition for Intuition, and um, let's talk, I guess, a little bit about the chakras and the four clairs and what that has to do with any of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, the whole like nutrition for intuition kind of came up because I started noticing there were 
changes and differences uh, based on you know certain foods or drinks that we would have. You know, like one day we'd feel like you know we're so connected to our angels and those messages are crystal clear, and then the next day it's just like murky, <laughs> like hazy cloudiness, and it's like what's different? You know, it's like you might have still meditated, you might have still you know had your crystals, the music, and the incense, and whatever else you need. But for some reason, it was different this time. Uh, and so what I started to realize with my naturopath work is that different foods and drinks were having effects on that. You know? And you know, over the course of a bit of time, uh, Doreen Virtue and I, we kind of collaborated to realize what foods would do different things and you know, how that could increase our intuition. You know? And so you mentioned the four clairs. So, yeah, but I guess I should ask before the four clairs. So we'll 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 uh, divert real briefly. A junk food hangover. <laughs> yes, so a junk food hangover. So this is like, you know, we're we're out and about. We're doing everything good. You know, we're meditating. We're doing all these kind of things. But you know, we still end up feeling like crap. And it's like, what is that about? You know, and so for me, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty boring, Michael. <laughs> so I don't drink alcohol. You know, I don't smoke. You know, I don't even like coffee. You You're know? high and on angels. You're very... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I must be. <laughs> but, you know, it's not that I even, you know, did it for health reasons. It's just that I never liked the taste, you know. And perhaps, you know, now I kind of figure out maybe it wasn't the energy. You know, it's like I was turned off the energy of it perhaps. But... You know, here in Australia, uh, 18 is the legal drinking age. <laughs> so the trend here, you turn 18, you have to go get drunk. <laughs> like you've got to go out with your friends, go to the pubs and clubs and all that kind of thing. Uh, so I kind of go off, you know, kicking and screaming because I'm not interested in that at all. You know, it's like... Not a fan of the alcohol. I don't like, at that time, you could smoke inside. So, you know, everything smells of cigarettes. They've got loud music playing that I've never heard in my life. <laughs> and you want to protect your energy. Exactly. <laughs> can see how this one's going. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was the driver. You know, so I would be the driver. I'd look after my friends, drive them to and from. Uh, and I would have no alcohol whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But then the next morning, I would wake up and feel hideous. <laughs> so I would have like this splitting headache and, and just be like in this horrible mood all day. Um, and it took me, you know, a number of rounds of this before I, I realized that this was what was happening after we were at the club. You know, so we'd grab, you know, some sort of fast food thing, you know, for the ride home and then everyone would go home and pass out. Uh, and then what I would do is I'd wake up the next day and feel awful. And it was because of that stuff. You know, it was all like the, the preservatives and the chemicals and who knows what else is in it um, that was affecting me. You know? And so that kind of put the sunglasses on that third eye of mine you know, so that I couldn't quite see my angels as clearly. That makes sense. So then, now let's go then, chakras and four clairs, or eclair, mm. something. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the clairs are like our, our ability to receive divine guidance. Mm -hmm. And so all of us have all four of these abilities, uh, but there's usually one or two that are a bit stronger. And so the one that is you know, the most sought after, the most revered, the most famous of all the clairs is clairvoyance. Mm -hmm. you know, everybody wants to be clairvoyant. They want to see everything. <laughs> you know? uh, and so that's what that one means. It's about visions and seeing things. Uh, but it also can mean seeing things within our mind's eye. And so it doesn't necessarily mean out here in the physical world. You know? And... You know, I'm lucky enough to know, you know, a lot of, you know, famous psychics and mediums and a lot of them are seeing things just in their mind's eye, you know, not out here. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just as powerful, you know, it's just as valid. Uh, we've also got the clairsentience, which is feeling, okay, so clear feeling. And that's where we just trust our gut feelings, you know, or we shake somebody's hand and suddenly our neck stiffens up. 
And it's like, well, they probably have some kind of neck thing going on at the same time. You know, and like you said, you know, your wife had knots in her stomach because of the stress that you were experiencing earlier. She's Poor probably Jessica. got that, that <laughs> <clear> sentience, <laughs> you know. Uh, and it's important for us when we are more clear sentient to trust those feelings. You know, not just think that this is a, you know, a random feeling, you know, it's, that's your divine guidance. You know, that is how your angels are talking to you. Okay. Uh, we've also got clear audience, mm-hmm. which is hearing. Okay. Uh, and again, that could be, you know, voices within our mind or, you know, outside, like somebody's whispering in our ear. Uh, the important thing to notice with those though, is they're always like encouraging and motivating voices. And so if those voices are, you know, telling us to do things like self-harm and stuff like that, then, you know, we want to go get someone to, you know, give us some extra support to, you know, deal with that kind of stuff. Um, but then we've also got uh, clear cognizance. Yep. Uh, and clear cognizance is like thoughts, you know, or thinking. Uh, and that's the one where, you know, the phone will ring and you'll know who it is without picking it up. You know, and you'll think about that friend that you haven't seen for 12 months and you bump into them at the supermarket. You know, it's like these are all ways that our angels are connecting with us and that we're receiving divine guidance. But so many of us ignore the majority of it because we want the vision. You know, like if we're not seeing an angel standing right here in front of me, then we're ignoring everything else. You know, we're not paying attention to our feelings. We're, we're not paying attention to that conversation that we just happen to be overhearing that seems to explain exactly what we're going through. You know? Or, you know, that song on the radio or that they call your name out on the TV. You know, all of these things are signs that we need to be listening to. So how do we use food as a way to kind of put on the glasses, so to speak, so we can see, hear, sense, feel and think these things more clearly? Mm-hmm. Well, our food really becomes like our medicine. Mm-hmm. You know? And so it's this, this powerful support tool that we have. And again, you know, so many people, we're just, you know, shoveling food in our face and just eating for the sake of it, rather than realizing how is this actually making me feel? You know, is this lifting my energy up and so I feel more inspired and I'm more connected and, you know, my chakras are opening up because we've, we've got all these energy centers all over our body and different foods can help to open those. So, for example, if we look at like blueberries, mm-hmm. you know, blueberries, a simple, easy food. Uh, that In my green smoothie us. this morning. <laughs> yeah, excellent. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> but you. The, the blueberries can help us open up our third eye. You know? So it can open up that center of clairvoyance. Mm-hmm. You know? It can awaken that center of spiritual sight. You know? And then people start to think, well, you know, I eat blueberries every day and, you know, I'm not clairvoyant. <laughs> it's like, well, let's look at how we're doing it. You know, maybe if we take that minute to you know, thank that food for the service that it's giving us, you know, if we become more particular about what kind of food is it, like is it you know, organic, is it conventionally grown, you know, is it fresh, is it frozen, you know, whatever it might be that could change the energy of that food for you. Because you know, we're all individual, we're all unique. You know, and as you'll see with any of my books, like I, I have resisted putting any kind of you know, strict plan in place to say, this is what you have to do. You know, because as a naturopath, that did not work. <laughs> you know, no, the, this average Joe that we hear so much about <laughs> doesn't exist. <laughs> There's no such person. So we have to take personal responsibility. There's no getting off the hook. We have to say, body, what are you feeling? And it's, mm-hmm. and it's probably not saying the triple Big Mac with cheese. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. <laughs> you know, but we do have to listen to our own guidance because you know, we're all here to do different things. Like if, if every single one of us had exactly the same purpose, mm-hmm. then sure, this you know, cookie cutout you know, eating plan and menu plan would be fine. You know, but you are here to do different things to what I'm here to do. And so 
our individual purpose kind of dictates what we need to do in this life, but also what we need, like as the fuel to sustain that journey. Because you know? so, some of us are here for a long time. <laughs> let's let's talk about there's there's a whole bunch of different directions we can go with this, and and I recommend for everybody to get the book because it's going to take it it's going to take each one clear sentience, clairvoyance, clear each one of the clairs, and it's going to break through break down different ways to boost things. But I'm trying to think of a simple place to start. And you and I were both talking uh, before the show about a passion of ours, which is green smoothies. <laughs> and so maybe green smoothies is a simple way that people can start to kickstart mm -hmm. this energy. Yeah, I love I love smoothies because we can cram so many good things into that one glass. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you've never tried a green smoothie before, you know, just trust us <laughs> because they look far more scary than what they are, right? <laughs> it's like they, I love them. They em. don't taste I that bad. I love them. No, they you know Sure, I've made a couple where I've just poured them straight down the sink, but you know. well, well, for for a year, for a year, two years, two years, I I used to have terrible blood sugar challenges, uh -huh. and so for two years it had to be. I'm I'm trying to do the math now. It was uh, when we were living on Maui. We lived there for three and a half years, so it may have even been more than two years to get my mm -hmm. blood sugar under control. I did the most horrific smoothies. I totally a direction I can't recommend anybody to go in, which which was. Um, all green, no fruit. And mm -hmm. so just these, these kale smoothies that were just mm -hmm. each day. And <laughs> I think it worked, but I think I've learned since then. I mean, it was just horrible. I've learned since then that if you have fruit in its natural form, which is why I'm saying smoothie rather than saying mm -hmm. juicy, because I, I want to get the, um, I want to get the pulp. I want to get the fiber with it that it doesn't actually spike my blood sugar, which is a miracle because I was pre-diabetic and then mm -hmm. I pulled it back thinking I couldn't do any fruit. And then I added fruit back into my life, something that you say is great for clairsentience to have that, mm -hmm. that sweetness mm -hmm. and it's working. Nice. High five. Woohoo! <laughs> you know, what am I doing thing. right? <laughs> yeah. It sounds like a lot you know, because I think what we need to realize is that food in its natural form mm -hmm. is received by our body in a totally different way than just counting calories. You know, it's like when we try and do the calorie counting thing, the, you know, 100 grams of broccoli. You know, 100 grams of broccoli is going to be received by your body completely differently to 100 grams of cake. I'm already okay. getting that restricted feeling. Just the, the idea of counting, as mm -hmm. silly as it sounds, is giving me a tighten up, a fear response of a this does not feel right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we're adding up these numbers and our body doesn't think that way. You know, it's... If we look at, and as I said, if we do a calorie comparison, go, we've got, you know, a thousand calories of, you know, let's say muffins, you know, a thousand calories of muffins compared to a thousand calories of kale, you know, our body is going to do completely different things with those, you know, but on this counting scale, they're identical. <laughs> so it's like, oh, this is how we do it. You know, and it's like, no, no, no. <laughs> we have to look at what is right for us. So as you say, when you reintroduce these natural fruits, mm -hmm. your body loved it. You know, your body said, thank you, Michael, you know, for, for giving oh, it me this good decadent. Stuff. It was like, I can have a date. I thought I couldn't have a date this lifetime. <laughs> and I can put the blueberries in smoothie and all these other fruits. And it, it felt like I was doing something illegal. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, you also mentioned one of my other loves, uh, kale. You know, I am definitely team kale. I'm a you know, kale, a kaleaholic. And I actually read a few years ago and I backed off for a while. And then I said, this is silly. This is what my body wants i read that kale if you have too much raw kale uncooked that it can build up uh, like mm. acidic crystals in your body and but, and i so i backed off for a while and now i'm full throttle and i i eat like a yeah. farm's worth a day so <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and that's it is it is true that you know every raw green has these small little uh compounds in it and it's 
it's like nature's way of trying to stop like bugs, like caterpillars and stuff eating it. Um, and you know, yeah, we want everything in moderation. So if we kind of rotate Mm -hmm. the greens that we're having, um, and we balance them out, but you know, I'm with you and I actually, I love the grassy taste. Like I, I like it. The, the more green, the better, you know, that's what makes me the happiest. (laughs) I, I used to, used to have three horses and, um, I loved feeding them flakes of hay and specifically alfalfa. And then I mm-hmm. started, I didn't understand anything about nutrition at the time, but I started taking alfalfa supplements, alfalfa pills, yes, yes. because I loved the smell of mm-hmm. the alfalfa flakes that I was giving the horses. That <laughs> serious greenness. And now, now yep. I guess I do it in spirulina. So in our smoothies, yes. so we've mm-hmm. got kale, we've got spirulina, we've got wild mm-hmm. blueberries, uh, mm-hmm. We've got ginger, we've got turmeric, but but nice. I, ha- I like getting that spirulina, that green mm-hmm. in there, which is something else you talk yeah. about, I think also yep. for the same purpose. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me tell you what your little concoction is helping with. So the kale um, is all about like opening up our centers of love. Right? And what the angels have taught me is that everything that comes from a place of love mm-hmm. is also healing. And so... Now, kale has been on the planet forever, but it feels like only in the last few years we've rediscovered it. <laughs> you know? And I think it's interesting to me because I kind of sit there and I go, well, why now? You know, why this sudden kale trend? Mm-hmm. You know? And the feeling I get around it is that because its purpose is to help open up that love and you know bring more healing, that's what we need right now. You know, like if we look at some of the the not so pleasant things that are happening around our planet, we need more kale. <laughs> we need that, that love. We need that healing to, you know, make all of us communicate and share how we feel. You know, it's about communicating and teaching one another, you know, what's going on in here. So we don't lash out. We don't go crazy with these other actions instead of just voicing it. And the spirulina, you know, it's got this deep emerald green color, uh, which connects us to Archangel Raphael, our healing angel. And so he kind of comes in to help balance, you know, our mind, our body, our spirit, you know, healing us physically, healing our aura, you know, giving us this spiritual and psychic protection Mm -hmm. at the same time. But as a naturopath, I love spirulina because it's, it's loaded with everything. You know, it's got all of our vitamins and minerals in there and they're available to us. You know, it's like our body recognizes them and says, yes, please, you know, I'll take more of that. Um, whereas like our synthetic supplements, our body has to do extra things to kind of turn it into something that we can use. I find that uh, fascinating because it's the it's the reverse concept of of the um, reductionist that you say, mm-hmm. well, give me a B three, give me a, yes. mm-hmm. and and the thing is, we don't use building blocks that way. They don't come mm-hmm. naked. The body then has to instead we get it as a whole, and then we can separate it into all sorts of wonder building blocks. There's a lot more. Yeah. The sum the sum is a lot greater than the individual part. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's why as well, like looking at our smoothies, you know, when we're putting these different things in there, it's like they're kind of like these individual blocks that then turn into this magic creation, which Mm -hmm. just nourishes us on so many levels. You know, yeah, it's good for us nutritionally, but then it's boosting our energy levels. It's clearing away negativity. It's opening up our intuition, our spiritual gifts. You know, it's doing all sorts of cool stuff. You know, like the blueberries, the blueberries opening up the third eye. We've got the ginger and the turmeric because these powerful anti-inflammatories, you know, to just... Throw some cinnamon in with that. (laughs) Yes, there's your blood sugar regulation. (laughs) (laughs) You know, we've got all sorts of fun stuff. And, you know, one that that I'm kind of obsessed with at the moment, Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I got this when I was meditating, right? So I thought that this was the coolest thing that the angels had ever given me until I did a Google search and realized that, you know, there's a whole bunch of people already doing this. (laughs) But but they do it for different reasons. (laughs) What they showed me was, like, taking a few strands of saffron, 
you know, like that super expensive spice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so just a couple of strands of that and put that, you know, in a little bit of hot water to kind of, you know, get that color infusing and soften that up. And then I put that in my smoothie. Uh, and what they told me that does is it helps, um, like with our clear cognizance, mm-hmm. you know, kind of helping us open that up. Uh, but also I feel it's connected to uh, one of our not so talked about uh, archangels, Archangel Raziel. Okay. Uh, and Raziel is like a, a spiritual teaching angel. And so he helps us to remember past lives. Yeah. Uh, he helps us to, you know, believe in our purpose. He helps to, you know, accept and embrace our gifts that we have and to understand, you know, deeper spiritual topics. Uh, and so just adding that little bit of stuff into my smoothie, you know, it, it gives me these amazing ideas for my writing. <laughs> so as I'm working on, you know, new projects, it's like this inspiration just starts coming through. A- any other favorites? Well, I, you know, we already talked about most of the favorites, like the kale and the spirulina. <laughs> but, you know, I think if, if I had to pick another one that I really like... Um, Another one I've been using a lot lately is, uh, and you know, this is a difference in how we say things. The acai berries, yep, yep, or yep. acai, yep. Uh, you know that one I really like too because, you know, again from a nutrition point of view, it's got a whole bunch of stuff in there. Some things that we don't even know what they are or mm-hmm. what they do, <laughs> but they just seem to make us better. Uh, but then on an energetic level, uh, it helps to like motivate us. It helps to inspire us. Uh, it's Fascinating. connected. To, yeah. It connects us to Archangel Michael. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it kind of gives us this shielding and this protection to kind of charge ahead, you know, fearlessly uh, so that we don't, we don't question what we're doing. You know, we, we have that faith, we have that trust, and we just go for it. You know, so that's probably another one of my big favorites. <laughs> so for, for women out there, I'm speaking for Jessica and many, maybe many others who look at those crow's feet, which the, us guys don't even notice. <laughs> and they're, oh, my God, I've got more crow's feet today. I'm like, where? <laughs> <laughs> a, a secret magic ingredient or two we should add to this. Uh, well, they say that the acai berry, like mm-hmm. it's in uh, some cultures called the beauty berry. Uh-huh. Uh, it, is, it is meant to, you know, make us more beautiful somehow. Again, we don't really know how. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then I think, you know, a big one that can help us with, you know, those kinds of things. Well, see, Michael, here's the naturopath and the healer in me wants to tackle this in a completely different <laughs> direction. Because you know, I would go, well, let me focus on the self-esteem thing so that you don't notice the crow's feet either. <laughs> <laughs> but if we look at it from a physical point of view, mm-hmm. uh, then I'd be looking more at like our, our vitamin C type things uh, because vitamin C helps us with our natural collagen production. And so it's the thing that gives us like our, our skin that's more elastic, you know, that's more youthful. Uh, and, you know, we can do that in a bunch of different foods uh, as well. Um, there is like one superfood uh, that is pretty sour, <laughs> pretty tangy. Uh, yep. But, you know, it is, it is really good, um, you know, vitamin C content. Uh, but as a topical thing, uh, you can get like these nice organic vitamin C serums. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like liquefied vitamin C. Right? And you can put that on your skin. Uh, and sometimes people will have like a couple of breakouts to start with. Uh, but then, you know, like a week or two later, it's like this this fresh, youthful skin starts to come out. So there's the superficial stuff. <laughs> All right. I, I've, I've got to ask on that note then because, um, and then we got to jump into a few wrap-up questions and, and get a short meditation in here. Um, mm-hmm. Jessica recently cut her shin. She was doing a, a plyometrics jumping box exercise at the gym. Oh. And somebody walked right in front of the box as she's jumping up this, this one-meter box and she landed mm. on her shins on the on the side of the box, and she has a couple deep gashes, which she's she's putting a um, like a a it's not a non sticky but a honey cream on it. She mm-hmm. was putting mm-hmm. on some uh, you know, argon oil. She was putting on it earlier mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. preventing scarring and helping healing, either the naturopath or the other side. Any recommendations? Yeah, yeah. Well, 
if as long as it's not uh, like open anymore, um, still, so like, it's, you know, st- it's it's scabbed. So there is a scab, okay. but it still still weeps. Yeah. Okay. Well, then just like around it, but not like in the middle. I would do like the vitamin C type serums um, because again, like I said, that's going to help with the the collagen production and the synthesis to kind of you know bind everything up nicely. What is uh, a but, what is a good vitamin? I've never even heard of a vitamin C serum. So what is that? look like or uh, how do you find something like that you can find it at most like health food stores i think like you guys in the u.s uh like whole foods mm-hmm. would have something in like their skin section i'm not good with u.s brands <laughs> you know, that's so, okay. yeah, but that's like that's what it's called like if you go in and say i would like a vitamin c serum mm-hmm. they'll be able to find it for you okay yeah <laughs> yeah and it's it's like this kind of like a a light cream mm-hmm. almost, you know, so it's like this sort of thin kind of oil almost type thing uh, that you then put it uh, around that area, you know, around the skin um, to heal it. Uh, and, you know, the reason we don't want to do it, you know, in the middle is because it can speed the healing up so fast that it might trap some of the other stuff in there. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. So we just want to go around the edges uh, and then that should help with, you know, any potential scarring and stuff like that. Um, and then if she does stuff internally, then maybe look at, you know, like vitamin E, uh, type things to, you know, sort of help us from that internal aspect. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I realized just to, to go back for the smoothie for a section, I'm not sure if we got something to add to the smoothie that you're saying is really high in vitamin C. What is one thing you'd recommend that's real high in C? Yeah. Oh, uh, it depends, you know, what you can handle. Like you could try like the Camu Camu, mm-hmm. uh, but only do a small amount of that. That would often come as, you know, like a powder type thing, uh, just because the taste can kind of overwhelm everything. <laughs> uh, otherwise, what I love to do is like the, you know, citrus that isn't oranges. <laughs> so, you know, I'll do like the lemons or limes and stuff like that. And I will often keep the skin on. You know, so, and, and blend you know, like, in the skin. Yep. Mm-hmm. Fascinating. Yeah. So like, whiz the whole thing up, you know, and, you know, if you've got a high powered machine, you know, like the Vitamix or something like that, that has the power behind it, then it'll pulverize it. You know? But if it's, you know, a machine that doesn't have quite as much oomph behind it, then you might have to take the skin off and maybe just grate a little bit of the skin in. Because uh, as well, that's where, you know, a lot of our vitamin C is hidden, you know, and it's in all like that white stuff. As on the well. Rhine. So is is it oranges aren't aren't doesn't have as much vitamin C or you're just not the biggest fan of the orange? Uh, well, oranges is still good. It's just again like there's uh, like our body handles them differently, you know. And so the oranges also have a bit more of like the sugar in them. Uh, and so you know I'll do those from time to time, but it's rare that I will use the skin of an orange. Uh, but there's been a lot of like research and studies done on lemons, for example, uh, and even, you know, like the seeds and the skin, the pulp and everything blended up and, you know, how they affect different, uh, you know, not so nice cells within the body and, you know, our immune system and the liver and gallbladder and everything else. So, you know, I suppose that's kind of what pushes me towards them as well. Beautiful. I think we could go on and on with questions in this. So everybody (laughs) get get the book, Nutrition for Intuition. Where can people go to find it and to find out more? Uh, It should be at any bookstore um, and it's online at, you know, Amazon.com as well. Uh, And if they want any other info, they can head over to my website, which is robertreeves.com.au. And I've got, you know, little articles and videos and all sorts of fun stuff. If I need to ground before the show, other than grabbing a potato, which I tend to do, <laughs> I go, get me beneath the surface. I need to ground. What do I want to ground? To ground us. Uh, as a food, I would be looking more at like those root vegetables. So like, you know, carrots and potatoes and pumpkin and squash and things like that that sort of live near the ground. Uh, like beets are also quite good, you know, with that grounding aspect. Yep. But for me, a lot of the time, you know, before this kind of thing, I will grab a crystal. You know? yeah. So, like, I'll hold on to, like, a garnet or a hematite or something, which has a bit of that heavier energy, um, but is also still more, you know, higher energy at the same time. So, my feet are planted on the earth, but I can still hear the guys upstairs. I'm, I'm feeling silly now because I have a bucket of hematite next to the door to the studio. <laughs> 
and I never do anything with them. I just yeah. walk past them on the way to the interviews. Well, that's why you ask the question. <laughs> well, thank you. All right. Before we jump into a, uh, a meditation, a couple quick wrap-up questions. First off, um, what brings you personally the greatest happiness or what I call the woohoo factor? <laughs> Uh, what brings me the greatest happiness? Well, I love I love being outside and in nature. You know? So I just love it when you know I get the chance to just go outside. You know, look at the trees, look at the flowers. You know, water in my garden. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like little things like that. Like on the weekend, um, you know, my partner and I went to the botanic gardens that are near our house, and you know, just walking around there. You know, no time limit. You know, just taking our time. And it seemed like there were just these, you know, hundreds of butterflies, you know, that kept kind of coming out to say hello. And, I you know, butterflies it. as well, uh, like a sign that our angels are around. Uh, so I like I, being I outside. Had, I had three times uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, we were out on a trail top of this, this little mountain. It's a few hundred feet high called Pyramid Mountain. <laughs> And, and a butterfly came, it started circling us, and then it landed yes. on my, the back of my shoulder and then flew off three times. It, it yes, did this, yes. and Jessica's like, it's on your shoulder. And I'm like, I can't look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's a sign that your angels are with you. Woohoo! <laughs> yep, you're, you're going in the right direction. <laughs> so any last words of wisdom you want to share with people? Uh, well, I think, you know, what we really need to do in this life and the whole purpose of our life is mm -hmm. to find joy. You know? So if there's things that you're doing every single day that you're not loving, you know, that aren't bringing you that fulfillment or that happiness anymore, then find a different way of doing it. You know, find somebody else who can support you or maybe take over some of that role. But I think... You know, we're here for a limited time, you know, and if we spend so much of that time doing stuff that we don't like, then that's no fun. You know, we have to focus on what is bringing us that joy. You know, is it going outside to water the garden? You know, is it, you know, going shopping for some new kale plants? You know, like whatever it might be that is just bringing you that happiness. We need to do more of that and less of the stuff that pulls us down. You know, and I think that's what's going to help all of us because it's just going to spread. Mm -hmm. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Woo Thank you. So do you have a, uh, a brief meditation you'd like to share with us then? Yes. I think as well what we should do, Michael, is we'll combine in here like a little bit of like flower therapy stuff. So, Very good. Because, yeah, we didn't get to flower therapy tonight, today, which is a, a real exciting topic as well. We <laughs> may have to have you back. <laughs> I'd love to come back. But I think like what I'll do is I'll, I'll guide you guys through a little meditation connecting us to the flowers that can also help to heal us and balance us. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. So if you just want to join me and you know, closing your eyes, making yourself nice and comfortable, let's just start by focusing in on our breathing. You know, we don't need to do anything to change our breathing, just noticing it. And just as we start to notice that breath, naturally starts to slow down. Find ourselves becoming more relaxed, more peaceful, knowing that at every moment we are divinely protected. We're supported along this journey and there's never a moment that goes by where we don't have that help and that support available to us. Even just thinking the word angels is enough to call that healing energy by your side. And so let's just imagine ourselves right now out in this beautiful field. You can feel the sunshine beaming down on our skin. We can hear the soft breeze kind of whistling through the grass. You might even notice there's 
little sparkles of light you know, dancing around. That's the energy of the fairies, the angels of nature. They bring you this refreshing excitement and happiness. They bring you joy and remind you that it's okay to have fun. They tell us that we need to take a break. We need to rest. We need to reconnect with who we are and why we are here. And now sprouting all around you are beautiful white roses. It's beautiful, pure white blossoms that help to purify our energy of any stress, any anxiety, any fear, letting it go, allowing that energy of nature to take away any fears and concerns that you might have right now. And if there's anything else that you'd like some extra support with, now's a perfect time to ask for it. Just silently asking for that help, for that support. Feeling that burden being lifted off your shoulders. And feeling the joy starting to flood back in. Feeling a big smile coming over your face. As you know, you are ready for this next step. You are going in the right direction and that you have all of the tools, all of the skills, everything you need to be successful. Everything you need to be happy, to be healthy, to be loved. And so we ask your angels and the angels of nature to support you and to guide you on that journey, taking you to new, exciting opportunities to bring even more happiness into your life. Just taking some more relaxing breaths. And then in your own time, you can start to reopen your eyes. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. This was absolutely fantastic. So much. Oh, fun. thank you. I had lots of fun too. <laughs> so for everyone, gotta crank it back up. Think green smoothie. For everyone out there, <laughs> this is Michael Sandler saying, be well, have fun, get nutrition for intuition, and grab a green smoothie, and shine bright. Woohoo! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. This was a blast. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like, like below. Also, leave your comments. Have some real fun with it. Subscribe to our channel where you're going to get more great videos, more interviews coming up. And check out our website, inspirenationshow.com. That's where you'll find tips, blogs, information, videos you won't find anywhere else, and useful and helpful resources to really help you kickstart your life and to shine bright. Thanks so much again. Thank you for your support. Like, 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 comment, subscribe. See the website. Thanks so much and have fun. Of course, shine bright. Woohoo! <laughs>